So let me tell you the state of play at Ross Cartography, what it is, what uh, production projects we're doing, and which we have completed as well. So looking, looking back, Ross Cartography was established in 2012 based on the President's decree. The enterprises that made part of a federal agency were incorporated and merged into a joint stock company, Ross Cartography, which de jure includes 32 subsidiaries, independent subsidiaries, but de facto, in reality, there's just slightly more than 20 in place and operationalized. The objective, overall objective, was to provide federal authorities with topographic data for defense capability and defense purposes. To achieve this goal, for five years running, we have been utilizing one of the mechanisms. Just a moment. We are the only implementer who, who the government has provided uh, with a task of doing topographic assignments. No tendering process. Uh, four years ago in Mexico, where Rockers had a conference, we debated for about five minutes whether or not it's going to help how effective that idea to establish a single implementer was and exclude competitive abilities of the others. So I will try to report to you on whether or not we succeeded. So being a sole provider, we performed uh, survey tasks, aerial photography tasks, creating digital topographic maps. And within four years, for all subjects of Russia, we did measurements together with Ross Register and the Federal Fiscal Facility. So we provided, we created, put in place a mechanism to transition to KSK 2011. As part of our land surveying effort, 24 stations of fundamental astronomic geodetic network were set up. 54 high accuracy survey network stations. We also conducted uh, survey and recovery of 20, about 2,500 GGS stations. Unfortunately, 40% of, of those have been lost entirely. But those that we did find, we recovered, reinstated measurement capability and incorporated them in our measurement processes. All, acro all across Russia, we established a mechanism relying on special deformity-based or deformity-adjusted templates. In other words, we embedded uh, a necessary transition parameters, allowing a switch 
to the national cadaster system. And as for leveling, leveling lines, which were outlined in the 50s or 70s of the last century, we managed to follow some of them. Uh, being able to recover certain portions of it. So we're talking about 6,000 6, kilometers of uh, grade, grade one networks. In addition to that, we have been tasked to carry out demarcation or delineation effort or border specification. And we did so with regard to 10 countries, completing the effort uh, with uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Belarus. Some of this is still ongoing. We continue to cooperate with our neighbors. The interaction is there, and the, the outcomes are also good. We are completing now. Finland and Norway, and now we started on uh, South Ossetia. Last year we uh, finished doing it uh, with Azerbaijan. Mapping works. We created and updated, mostly updated, of course, digital topographic maps which existed. For Russia, with the uh, scale range of 1 to 25,000, 1 to 100,000, 87,000 nomenclature units means not only unique nomenclatures, but also their derivatives. So we create digital topographic maps that have a full list of attributes, uh, open use maps and open use navigational maps. All of this making up this number of 87,000. We created uh, maps for more than 1,000 cities and towns of Russia with the area over 75,000 square kilometers. Uh, we have uh, open source maps and other maps too. So this map shows you our performance and outcomes in the past five years, which is what we created and updated. One to 25,000 scale. Uh, using generalization technique. So 50 followed by 100. So the terri for this territory, we created maps in all three scales. Speaking of production, in 2014, President of Russia charged us with a task to create a national Arctic Atlas. If you remember, in 2004 and 2005, the National Russian Atlas was created. And ever since, no fundamental research was conducted. So uh, the National Arctic Atlas has been a creation that was completed in under two years. It has a number of uh, contributors to this process. Unfortunately, the number of copies available is very limited. Uh, we published it at Omsk uh, mapping factory, which we own. 
so the number of copies is under 1,000. But this year, this year, there will be a, a second updated edition. Actually, we believed from the very beginning that the Arctic region is something that the people need. And these pictures uh, demonstrate uh, the launch event at the Ministry of Defense, at the government. There are electronic versions of this product available. Aerial photography. Since, since uh, the year 2000, the government unfortunately hasn't commissioned any materials based on aerial photography. But since 2015, when Crimea was integrated into Russia, we were tasked to conduct an aerial photography imaging of uh, the entire Crimean Peninsula of 27,000 square kilometers uh, with 20 uh, centimeter resolution. And we covered 98%, 98% of the territory. And we acquired materials uh, for all localities with the scale of 1 to 2,000. And for the entire territory of Crimea, we completed topographic mapping with a scale 1 to 10,000. The Republic of Tatarstan, a really awesome project. I'll skip a few slides. In 2015, Ross Cartography entered into an agreement of cooperation uh, with the government of uh, Republic of Tatarstan to update and increase availability of uh, survey and topographic data and make it uh, available for users. So I will elaborate on this project in more detail later. So in Tatarstan, we, we managed to perform a piloted aerial photography flight. I mean, we also use UAVs, of course. And we rely on spaceborne imagery as well. So we were assigned to do an imaging of Tatarstan with 15 centimeter resolution. And on August 15th, we completed the assignment. Now the data is being processed. By the end of the year, we plan to have turned out, to, to have turned around more than half of the residential localities and create maps of one to 2,000 and provide it to the commissioner. Besides, I say again, it's been a long while since the government commissioned any aerial photography materials, but this year and last year too, apart from numbers neutral new, we completed uh, uh, ten other, nine other one million plus uh, cities where we performed aerial photography resulting in orthophoto plants. And we are in the process of completing digital topographic plans of one to 2,000 for some of the cities. I believe this has been a tremendous work. Exciting too and sizable. If you're interested in any details, me or my colleagues can bring you bring you up to date. My colleagues actually are going to 
uh, delve into those projects uh, more specifically, give you all the particulars. I say again, 11 cities, nine of which are 1 million plus, fairly large in size and in population and very uh, important for the country. We have data for them now. So speaking of production part, one of the projects, a contribution of uh, Ross Cartography in the National Technological Initiative project has been a serious involvement. But again, this is outside of the scope of the single provider paradigm. Over 67,000 square kilometers were acquired. Toward the end of the year, we'll have all the relevant materials and it will be made available for the for all the areas, including those where no residential settlements are available for open areas. So based on the government funding and the local funding, we managed to deliver an update, update data for Tatarstan uh, doing 1 to 25, 1 to 50, and 1 to 100,000 scale. So here are the cases from live. This is a digital topographic plan upon which we superimposed cadastral information. Uh, we managed to adjust the location of the boundaries. And now Ross Cartography is trying to disseminate the information to as many stakeholders as possible. The more people are aware about it, the more successful we'll be doing more projects. We're planning to establish a geo portal again before the year though is over. We're trying to create various services. Some of them have been done already. In Far East region, uh, we contributed to creating a service of designating licensed areas for water areas, for fishing, uh, for production. And now we are trying to establish our own data bank or database containing hopefully all the information that we have collected. I will not take too much of your time. I mean, I'll be preaching to the choir to tell you who the users of the data will be and how beneficial it is. As part of the Tatarstan project, we're trying to participate in cloud technology. We're trying to address real production goals and objectives. Unfortunately, the confidentiality considerations do not allow us to fully use these technologies. But we're doing our best. And hopefully, we will have necessary acts passed by the government of the Russian Federation by the end of 2018, which shall allow us to make those data more accessible for everyone. Subsequently, the results are well understood and uh, these results are needed 
both to governments and all other entities who use spatial data for any objectives that they pursue. Not a single service can work without maps or spatial data. I hope that these solutions, not of not scientific, but really industrial applications will help us establish or fine-tune really modern and contemporary solutions for cloud applications and uh, will help us deliver those spatial data to the end users. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you. I forgot to warn the speakers and moderators that you need to stick to time. And Andre has just shown uh, how it can be done. Because we know that this is a big conference. We need to be within time. So it was perfect. Time for questions now. Can I ask a question? First, I will ask the question, then I will pass it on to somebody else. Um, my question about the maps of 25,000 or 100,000, what format uh, is the, of those maps and uh, how big is the coverage of the, with, of the updated mapping? The format is SXF. The uh, software product is Panorama, meaning we use the format Wait a second. It's this same format is used both by the Russian governments and the uh, Minister of Defense, so they use it as XF. 25,000, 5,000, 50,000, 100,000. This is the area of coverage. Speaking about unique nomenclatures, then it's about 30,000, which includes three different scales 25,000, 50,000, 100,000. They're unique. And the number that I showed here. 87,000, which means aside from these three maps, we also supply three types of other products. Digital map, open map, and navigational map. Okay, thank you. More questions? Andrei Evgenievich, you mentioned aerial photography. In what way, in what amount did you use satellite imagery for this project? When updating of city plans for 10,000 scale and 25,000 scale for 99.9%, .9%, we use, first of all, remote sensing. More than half would be the domestic satellite data from Canopus or Resource. Whenever we are lacking something, then our colleagues from Digital Globe can uh, supply us with additional data from Airbus. Thank you. Aerial photography is used for the 2000 scale. Thank you. More questions? There were questions from that side. Actually, this presentation um, inspires many questions because this is a major company in Russia. Everybody is curious how it works. Alexander Chukurin, company Rockers. I think uh, everybody who asks the question must uh, introduce themselves first. Yes. You mentioned or rather told us about uh, Atlas of Arctics. This is an international area. Is this Atlas made available for foreign countries? Alexander, I'm at a loss trying to answer this. I think it is available easily because it's not uh, confidential information. All the data contained in this Arctic Atlas are all open use data. So the material was created upon the request or instruction of Ross registry and uh, it was uploaded into the uh, fund uh, where we can uh, download both the digital and analog version. And I see no limits to, there is uh, 
set of rules how to get it. And uh, at the moment, this material is uploaded into this fund, and it's uh, readily available for any company. We have more time for questions. There are many questions here. Professor Chibunich was the first to raise his hand. Alexander Chibunich. Tell us, please. You did a lot of aerial photography. What cameras did you use for aerial photography? I am going to try to show you this now. In Rostov on Don, we use PMC2, Volgograd phase one, 190, with two lenses, Novosibirsk phase one, Ufa phase one, perm. Perm, let me think, I think, ultra, ultra cam, no, DMC2, Yekaterinburg phase one, Omsk DMC2, Nizhny Novgorod Vexel. Chelebinsk. Chelebinsk, Penta, we used Penta. Kazan and Nabrezhny Chelny, we used ADS-100. My colleagues are going to report on it later, but I can tell you that Roskartography, unfortunately, doesn't have much funds, but we do have something. Last year, we bought ADS-100 and Phase 1. And now, we are actively using these two cameras, ADS and uh, Phase 1, to do photography in Tatarstan. About 20% and uh, 20% Leica helped us, gave us for testing DMC-3 for testing. And uh, we're going to acquire the results from the whole range of Leica, for sure. And uh, last year, two towns were acquired by Vexel. Interesting, very interesting. More questions? Still time for questions. Vladimir Arhipov, I have the similar question about Tatarstan. What camera did you use for Tatarstan for such a huge area as Tatarstan? And two other smaller questions. It was, was it stereoscopic or monoscopic imaging? And are these materials available for end users? Can we buy this through cloud, maybe? I will repeat once again, in Tatarstan, we used, the, for eastern part, we used phase one, western or southwestern part with ADS, and northwestern part by DMC2. And in the middle of Tatarstan, we used DMC3. All the data shall be made open, shall be open use. This is the requirement of the customer, the Republic of Tatarstan. All of them will undergo the procedure which will uh, allow us to upload them into open use. All of them will be given away to the government of Tatarstan. We are no, no owners of this data. It will be there, can be found there. And we have time for one or two questions. Can I use this opportunity and ask the question? As a moderator, I have two minor questions. First one, you were talking, most of us were discussing topographic works, but uh, land surveying is a big challenge for Russia. Uh, photography for cadastro, how would you comment on this? Like next year, we have plans to, for this far eastern part of Russia do some work on aerial photography of the Far Eastern Federal region for the exact purpose of preparing materials which will be used for cadaster. For to address this big cadaster problem, in my presentation I mentioned that we have done some work on transition to GSK 2011. Okay, that's it. But it was a serious project where we did a lot of measurements, 
and identification, not only local coordinate, system of coordinates, but also a lot of conditional, sometimes not all cadaster specialists know what this marker is to their conditional system that uh, they have to survey. Sometimes we had such paradoxes to handle when we had to find them ourselves, establish the initial parameters and uh, and uh, software in did the transition for us. Well, the cadastro is quite challenging for Russia. No matter how long we work with that, it's, there's still a lot of problems with that. Yes, indeed, unfortunately, but the federal cadastro chamber is uh, reporting to Ross Registry, and they're doing colossal work in order to update or to make their cadastro as com highly compatible. And the final question, it's good that we saved some time initially. That's why we can ask more questions to Andrei Evgenievich. And final minor question, you were talking most about conventional uh, products, topo maps and orthophotos, but there is a new trend for new products uh, like acquisition of 3D models. And now we are going back to a true ortho. And uh, at the state level, do you consider inclusion of like, products as 3D models by special normative requirements or true ortho into the set of products which are required or ordered by the state? In fact, Ross Registry is not ordering such types of products, but the Republic of Tatarstan did order all, all towns and villages, even small villages. It's more than 2,000 square kilometers, in excluding Kazan and Nabirezhny Chilny. These 2,000 uh, square kilometers do not include them. They include only the remaining villages and towns. And uh, Tatarstan, in Tatarstan, the customer required that for all those towns and villages, we also prepare 3D models. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. We don't have any more time for questions.